uh, can you help me? Okay. Okay. Uh, my name is Chipin Liu. I'm um, annual quantum port fellow, and today I'll be uh, talking about unclonable uh, cryptography. So, uh, as also introduced by uh, Andrew, um, in this talk, we will also leverage the uh, quantum no cloning principle. Well, basically, it says uh, there's no way uh, for a quantum algorithm to copy a no quantum state. Classically, it is simple because you know like every single bit and you can uh, simply write the bit twice and you can copy a, a quantum state. But this is uh, not doable uh, in a quantum setting. So uh, the no cloning principle opens the door to many classically impossible uh, cryptography uh, primitives. This example includes like the famous uh, quantum key uh, distribution uh, by uh, Bernard and Brizard and quantum money first uh, proposed by Wisner back in uh, 60s and later published in 83. And also like, uh, like quantum copy protection first uh, proposed by Arison. And there are many, many more applications. And this application relies on some forms of uh, unclonability of certain quantum states. And namely, there are some uh, famous example, for example, the uh, BB84 states or the, the Wisner state. Uh, there are like many examples using this state or uh, the subspace states. And uh, more recently, we, uh, with Andrea and other co-authors, we give a, a, a unified notion, a generalized notion called a coset states, which possess many important properties of both uh, BB84 states and uh, subspace states. So um, in this talk, uh, I will briefly talk about these unclonable states, but not uh, give any implications of copy protection, but just use a, a maybe the simplest example, which called position verification. So, and we will see like, uh, what's the, uh, the difference between uh, different unclonable uh, states, just by looking at uh, their implementation of position verification. So position verification is a protocol to verify one's location in a, in a cryptographic way. And let's look at position verification in a 1D dimensional space. So uh, we have two verifiers at the end of the one dimensional space. And there's an astronaut, which we say it's a, like a prover, uh, wants to claim it is at certain uh, location of the space. And then in this example, we say um, uh, for convenience, the astronaut uh, claims it is at uh, location 0.5, which is in the middle of the space. Okay, so, and we want to have a protocol to, to verify its exact location. So the first thought is by simply doing so-called distance bonding. Um, so instead of proving the astronaut is at a certain location, we can first try to prove it is within certain distance of the verifier. And this is actually uh, very easy. We don't need any uh, cryptographic tool or any quantum information. We can simply add a verifier uh, one verifier send a random message and broadcast the message. And later on, it uh, wants to receive the message back uh, on time. So because we know that there's no faster than light communication, if it received the message on, let's say, uh, time one, then the astronaut must lie in the, in the uh, uh, within like 0 0.5 of the verifier. So this proves uh, the astronaut is within a certain distance of the verifier. Therefore, it's natural to maybe, let's say uh, we can put another uh, verifier on the right of the, of the space and both of them do distance bonding. And then we can claim the astronaut is exactly at uh, 0 0.5. Um, but however, this are some problems with this protocol. Um, look at uh, this example. Well, instead of have uh, one uh, astronaut, now we have two malicious astronauts. They are uh, having some uh, colluding strategy. So we will see that uh, in this example, there are two uh, astronauts. One sits in 0 0.3 and the, uh, the other one sits in 0 0.7. So they can just uh, handle the, uh, the queries uh, for the left one, they can handle the query from the left verifier and similarly for the right uh, astronaut. So actually in general, uh, 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 we can show that any classical protocol cannot be secure. In other words, if uh, everything is uh, uh, like the co uh, communication and the computations are both purely classical, then there is no uh, secure um, uh, uh, position verification protocol. So therefore, 
it's natural to think about maybe we can exchange quantum information like using some unclonable quantum states and because we will see um uh, we see that in the in the impossibility result the attack comes from we can copy classical informations but here using quantum information maybe we can prevent the attack so now uh this is like we first introduced the most fundamental state which process uh, which possess some some forms of unclonability which are bb84 states so uh, since andrea already explained that i will just uh, quickly uh, go through it so basically uh these are two sets of non-orthogonal states well theta indicates uh the basis if theta is zero we're in the computational basis and if theta is one we're in the hardware basis they can be either a zero state a one state or a plus state or a minus state and we usually use uh, x theta to denote a sequence of bb84 states so in this example x can be zero one zero and theta can be uh, one one zero and they can encode a bunch of uh, bb84 states let's say uh, n qubit and the bb84 states uh, have the following unclonability which is uh, first proved as so-called uh, monogamy of entanglement but where we just uh, say it's uh, we just view it as an unclonability. So the game says, um, if we uh, if the challenger gave unknown BB84 states to a quantum algorithm, there's no way for the quantum algorithm to split the quantum state into two copies. And later on, this uh, this two quantum machine, upon giving these uh, copies, they cannot communicate with each other. And then uh, they they then uh, get the the basis information which help them to uh, extract the secret which is the x and they show that it is actually uh, very hard for even unbounded quantum adversaries to both simultaneously extract the info uh, the secret x and this is the uh on the, like the harness of unclonability so uh with the help of vb84 states we can then show uh uh, how to do position verification in a perfect secure way without using any uh, hardware assumptions so uh, to do that we simply uh, send the uh, bb84 states from the left verifier which is a quantum verifier and for the right verifier it sends the basis information theta which help uh, the astronaut to recover the secret x and when these two information meets in the middle the uh, the astronaut can try to uh extract x and then broadcast x to both uh, the quantum verifier and the classical verifier okay so next we show that with the help of unclonability the scheme is actually secure so as the example uh um, let's consider two malicious uh astronauts which they are not uh, in the middle of the of the space then uh they receive either x theta or the basis information theta and without loss of gen uh, generality, the astronaut on the left can uh, try to copy the state and prepare row one and row two. It will uh, keep row one and send row two to the other astronaut. And the right astronaut, because it receives classical information, which is the description of the basis, uh, it can simply forward that basis. So it ends up with the following setting. Well, there are two non-local astronauts. They cannot communicate because they're uh, far away from each other. They cannot, uh, therefore they don't have e enough time to communicate, but uh, they have like uh, row one uh, quantum state with the basis information theta. And for the right one, they have row two and also theta. And to, uh, to convince the verifier, they need to both learn X, which exactly reduced to the unclonable game. In other words, if they can break or if they can uh, fool the verifier, they must break the unclonability of the BB84 states. So uh, we have seen uh, a position verification scheme. However, there are some drawbacks of this, uh, of this scheme. First is it is hard to authenticate a quantum state. Therefore, there might be some uh, malicious verifier. Uh, they want to try to uh, steal the location, uh, the information uh, of the location of the astronaut. Um, and the second is the problem that transmitting quantum message as we see we need to send a bb84 states it is actually very expensive and has high rate of error so we want this whole protocol to be uh, fault tolerant so and therefore we solve the first problem by using coset states which um, provides some kind of uh, public verifiability which uh, bb84 states does not have 
And second was sort of the problem of uh, fault tolerant by making only classical communication. That is, we, we force the uh, position verification to just exchange classical communications and because classical communications are cheap and easy to be fault tolerant, we solve the second problem. So let's uh, uh, look at the, how to solve the first problem. Uh, the impossibility rule of classical information and classical computation. And in the in the second way of solving the problem, we use classical communication and a quantum classical communication and a quantum computation. Like local quantum computation. Yeah, you, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. So uh, yeah, for the first problem, we use uh, some something called coset states. Here I'm I'm not going to uh, talk about this. Uh, in details, but basically, as we see, the unclonability of VB84 states. Um, here we uh, we have uh, subspace A. Here, this A is basically the the, the basis information theta, and uh, we have S and S prime. You can think about this as just like the X in the in the VB84 states. So this is exactly the same as uh, unclonability of VB84 states, but it has some extra uh, extra advantage that. Uh, uh, even if you provide uh, this two uh, uh, program, the program can help you to um, do uh, authenticate. That is, if the quantum state pass both programs, they are a classical program, then we can uh, sure that the quantum state is a particular state. So it's provide another way to authenticate the quantum state. And the unclonability holds even if we're giving this two authentication program. So uh, this is like the only difference between BB84 on clonability and um, this uh, coset states. So therefore, we can uh, easily transit position verification and we make it uh, uh, with authentication. So simply instead of sending BB84 states, we set coset states and we send uh, the basis information. And finally, they want to extract the secret, which is SNS prime. So to authenticate, we can first authenticate all the classical information, which is the classical program, these two programs, and the basis information. And then we can authenticate the, the quantum state using these two programs. So it's provide an easy way to authenticate the, the whole protocol. And finally, we show uh, how to make it fault tolerant. So we uh, make it fault tolerant by using a different method based on uh, noisy trapdoor collaborate functions, which we use for uh, proof of quantumness and certifiable randomness. Um, so uh, we will not go into uh, any details of NTCFs, but we prove that based on NTCFs, uh, there's a, the following unclonability with only classical communication. So uh, the challenger only uh, make classical interaction with the player. And at the end of the game, the player will have some unknown, but also unclonable states. And later on, the, the player want to copy the state into two parts. And, and uh, similarly, these two parts cannot communicate with each other. And then these uh, two parts of the quantum uh, algorithm will later on receive this uh, identical but random challenges. And they cannot produce uh, valid answers corresponding to these same challenges. Okay. So, and based on that, we can achieve a, a position verification protocol with purely classical verifier, but only the local, uh, like the prover, which is the uh, astronaut, need to be quantum. Okay, so uh, to conclude, we use uh, the position verification scheme as an example and show some uh, different unclonability. So there are actually many more applications than position verification. I think it's an active area and would have many interesting implications in both quantum information and cryptography. So um, that's uh, conclude my talk. Thanks. Yeah, I'm actually really confused by this model. Like, I don't understand how it's possible to, if you go for more than two dimensions. Like, how do I even transmit like a quantum state like in all three dimensions? Like, it seems like that would violate no cloning. Uh, so yeah, so you, you cannot like broadcast from uh, messages. Okay, so so maybe limited the first is like maybe you can send directional messages, or you can use entanglement. But like that's exactly the point. Well, um, in the like, like in the last example, we use classical communications. Yes. Because if you if it keeps it that in a direction, then you have to know where they are before you even verify them. Yes, exactly, right? exactly. Yes, Th yeah. Th that's actually yeah. That's a very good question. So that's another motivation for considering uh purely classical communications. And also, it seems like the classical possibility that only applies to fixed 
uh, verifier location, right? The verifier has chosen the location randomly independent of the prover. I don't think an impossibility would apply. Uh, it seems like an easier way than having- Not necessarily, all right. I mean, as long as you have like polynomial on like many, many, many adversaries as long as they are not in the exact location, uh, the impossibility would apply, I believe. And we can talk about software. Okay, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yes, and that's it. Yes, great. Uh, so let's thank all the speakers. Thank you.